name is Sean Christie, and I'm a surgeon scientist in Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, appointments in Dalhousie University and the Queen Elizabeth II Health Sciences Centre, uh, where I lead the spine service for the neurosurgery division. We serve the Maritimes, but primarily Nova Scotia with regards to traumatic spinal cord injury, so we would deal with those patients uh, as they come in. And uh, in addition to that, we're actively involved in research, uh, both laboratory and clinical research. And being an academic center, we have residents, so another part of our day is involved with teaching, so it can be a full day. There's a discovery interest, which is our laboratory interest, and we're primarily involved with uh, understanding what goes on after spinal cord injury, in particular uh, with regards to the different stresses the body's under and the secondary injury mechanisms. Um, so, so one aspect of that would be termed oxidative stress, and we're looking at how that changes within the cells of the spinal cord so that we can develop treatments that would reduce any further injury that a person uh, may get after or worsening of their injury that a person may get after they had their initial um, accident. Uh, from a clinical standpoint, uh, there's a few things that we're interested in. Uh, one that we talked about at this meeting here is primarily headed up by Christine Short, who's one of our uh, physiatrists and an active member of our team. And she's come up with a very good uh, idea, a good project to look at trying to reduce the problems with pain um, after spinal cord injury. So as you're aware, a lot of people with spinal cord injury have a number of different problems. Uh, and one of the most significant ones is pain, and up to almost a half of people with a spinal cord injury develop a very severe pain, and we call it neuropathic pain because it's, it's different from the pain that you get when you um, bump your toe on the, on the doorstop or something like that. This is more of a burning, deep pain that uh, can persist and is very difficult to treat. And there are some treatments that have shown to be uh, beneficial, but what uh, Dr. Short's idea was that uh, maybe we can prevent that pain from happening at all. And we were hoping that we could prevent that pain by happening at all if we give a treatment drug before people even get the pain. So that's what we talked about today, and that, or that's what we talked about at the meeting here, and that's one of the, uh, one of the focuses uh, of our group's research. And again, I say it's uh, our group, but it's really Dr. Short uh, who's come up with that plan. Uh, and it's, it's been promising, but we're still in the early days. Uh, we don't have all of our patients enrolled and that sort of thing, so we can't make a definitive comment, but it's been, uh, we can comment that it's, it's tolerated well. Uh, the people who have received it haven't had any problems uh, with regards to the treatment, uh, and the treatment uh, goes by the name of pregabalin. Um, but it's, like I say, too early to, to really make a statement as to whether or not uh, it has a big impact. The reason why we think this is good and one of the reasons why we were able to do this and one of the nice things about uh, our group in Halifax is we have very close collaboration uh, between uh, people that do clinical research, people who take care of patients, and the people who uh, do exploratory laboratory research. In the early days after injury, uh, when there's a, you know, a, a number of different aches and pains that people have just because of the nature of their of their injury, um, they can feel that pain and that can be difficult to sometimes to sort out in terms of whether it's neuropathic pain or what we call nociceptive pain. Um, but absolutely people can develop neuropathic pain very early. In, for the purposes of this study, this pilot study, to really show that there's a difference in neuropathic pain, we are currently excluding people who have pain that may be neuropathic in nature to try to get a more clear answer to a question. And then I think as we go into larger confirmatory studies, we will have all comers uh, involved, or we'd certainly look at that. Um, but to directly answer your question, neuropathic pain can happen at any time. Um, but we are targeting the people who tend to develop it on a delayed basis uh, at this point in time, looking to encompass everybody in the future. There's a huge quality of life issue. Um, and there's not only quality of life, but there's issues with regards to ability to participate in their rehabilitation uh, programs. If somebody's in severe pain, you can imagine that getting up and doing things uh, can sometimes not be the thing they want to do that day. And that doesn't help further their, their improvement. Uh, in severe cases, people who uh, don't 
uh, have good relief from their pain, uh, it does, it eats on you. And we see that not only in spinal cord injury, we see it in any chronic pain state, but it's uh, chronic pain is associated with things like depression. And in, and in that situation, obviously it impacts uh, life greatly. And, uh, and then we're trying to avoid that whole um, basket of troubles that people just don't need to deal with. Well, I think that the Rick Hansen Institute and the Rick Hansen Foundations have really done a great job with developing uh, networks across Canada and, and extending globally, really. Um, there are a number of people that I've worked with over the last number of years in centers across Canada, um, not particularly just for this project, but for other projects that we're working on as well. So this is a great opportunity to network bring things up to speed, exchange ideas, and really try to advance the field. So I think that this meeting is great to network with a lot of different people.